We're going to do some more examples, and before we do that, I am going to offer some advice for you. One of my pieces of advice is that you you can use the square root operation to undo powers of 2, so that might seem pretty obvious to you, but if we have sine squared of x, for example, you want to get it down to one single trigonometric equation. So we want to get it down to one single sine or one single tangent of something or cosine of something. So um, we don't want sine squared. Okay, so I'm going to undo the power of 2 by square rooting, and the big thing is don't forget a plus minus. Two, you can use the zero product property on factors. So just like you would have x times x plus 1 is equal to zero, and then you could go ahead and solve for this equation by setting each one of your factors equal to zero. So x equals zero, and then x plus 1 equals zero, and solve for your x. You can do the same thing here. You can set sine of x equal to zero, cosine of x plus 1 equal to zero, and then solve for those x's in that regard. Three, substitution may help for composition functions. So if you have something like sine of u, or for example, sine of 2, um, x, something like that, you're going to want to keep that 2x. You've already got it stripped down to a single trig expression. So what you might want to just do is use some sort of substitution for that overall angle. And I'll show you that process in a little bit. But the first one that I'm going to do is number three. And what number three asks is verify that the x values are solutions. So what they do is they actually give you two x values. x is equal to pi over 12. And then also they gave us another one, x is equal to 5 pi over 12. All right, the thing about this is um, you could go ahead and just sub these in and see if it makes a true statement. So you could, in your calculator, plug in 3 tangent squared of, in parentheses, 2 times the square root of, uh, 2 times pi over 12, close parentheses, minus 1, and see if when you hit enter that equals 0. But I'm actually going to solve this out algebraically with you to kind of foreshadow what's going to be happening with this. So I would like you to do that um, this way for, for these problems. So the first thing that I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be taking this and stripping this down just to tangent of whatever I, I end up with. So we are using sad map. And I am going to go ahead and clump these together. What you do have to realize is that 2 times x is automatically together. They're already chunked together. You can't break them up. Um, there were no parentheses around this minus 1, so you can go ahead and assume that that's not attached to the x. But that 2 is very much attached to the x. Okay. So when we're doing this, we're going to ask ourselves, is there any subtraction or addition that is not in parentheses that is being done onto this whole trig expression, and yes there is, there's that subtraction of 1, so you're going to undo that by adding 1. This leads you to get 3 times tangent squared. Alright, so now I'm going to ask myself, any multiplication or division, not in parentheses. Remember, this 2 is clumped with that x, it's being the tangent of with that, that x. So I'm going to focus on this 3 on the outside here. Oops, sorry, this should be 1. So I'm going to divide both sides by 3. I'm going to get tangent squared of 2x is equal to 1 third. Here is where you do want to get just a singular trigonometric equation or expression, so I'm going to square root both sides to get rid of that power of 2. This leads me to get tangent of 2x is equal to, and here don't forget your plus minus, the top you can break um, a radical up if it's the radical of a fraction or square root of a fraction, you can take it the square root of 1 divided by the square root of 3, you can break it up. So we would get 1 over the square root of 3, but know that that has to be rationalized, so I'm going to get this in the end, plus minus the square root of 3 over 3. Okay, so I have gotten it down to just a singular trig expression. Um, there is some more things going on. This is that composition that I was talking about. So what I am going to do is I am going to rewrite this as tangent of theta because I am going to let theta equal 2x. Okay, And that way I can just focus on, all right, if I were to take tangent of something, what is going to get me what is that something that would get me the square root of 3 over 3? And through experience, tangent is a little bit difficult 
because you actually have to calculate it on your unit circle because you don't have, for example, sine of, if you had sine of theta is equal to one half, you just have to look at for what y values are one half. But tangent, you would actually have to calculate, all right, what angle when you take the opposite divided by the adjacent or the y divided by the x, will you get the square root of three over three? And I know through experience that it is this point. You're going to want to avoid the 45 the 45 types of angles, the ones that quarter the pi, because those are the square root of 2 over 2 and then the square root of 2 over 2. So when you take the ratio of the two sides, it's going to just be values of 1, whether it's negative or positive. Um, but this one, we can even test it. This is the, on your unit circle, pi sixths. And it's that 30, 60, 90 triangle with the 1 half shorter leg and then the square root of 3 over 2 longer leg. So when you do the opposite, which is one half, oops, I think I might be off the page. So one half divided by the square root of three over two, what you will get is one half times two over the square root of three. Cancel those out, you get the one over the square root of three, which you can rationalize to be the square root of three over three. So we got it. Um, this is one of those angles that when you take the tangent of it, the opposite over adjacent, you're going to get the square root of three over three. So I'm going to, off to the side, say theta is equal to five over six. Okay, but then we also have to recognize that if you flip this triangle over, this triangle, which is a reflection of this one over the y-axis, also has the same heights, and it does also have the same longer leg happening for the x value, though it's negative. But that's why um, we also we have to be weary of that plus minus. So this also uh, the 30 degree, the pi six right before the pi, which is going to be five pi six because it's one pi six less than six pi over six. Um, there is one uh, another solution. We have another solution. Okay, this flipped will also do because the height and the the vertical and the horizontal are the same. So that is one past six pi over six. And then finally, sorry, I kind of ran out of room here. Theta is equal to this one as well, eleven pi sixths. I can just scroll down. Hold on. Okay, so sorry. I kind of got squishy there. Okay, so here's kind of the kicker. We're not done yet. Um, you're kind of noticing, oh, none of those match. They're not, they're not the same. But we're not solving for theta. I use that substitution method. So what I am going to have to do is plug these back in, this 2x for my theta, and then actually solve for my x. So I'm going to get 2x is equal to all of these again. I know it's kind of a pain. 2x is equal to 7 pi over 6. And then 2x is equal to 11 pi sixths. And you're going to solve for the x by dividing both sides by 2. So what you get is x is equal to pi twelfths. Okay? And I hope you see that um, if you were to actually plug that back into this more uh, stripped down equation. If you were to plug in pi twelfths, you get two times pi twelfths, which, you know, is, is going to reduce to be pi six. And yeah, tangent of pi six is equal to that. All right. Same thing for all these. X equals, um, when you divide, you're going to just get twelfths as a denominator. So five pi twelfths is what you're looking for there. X equals here, seven pi twelfths. And then X equals 11 pi twelfths. Whoops. Ah. Okay. So when you're looking back up here, basically your answer, what this, this question is asking for is yes, this is in fact a solution. And yes, this one is as well. And these ones of course are also, and there are actually an infinite amount more because we would also be looking at coterminal ones, but we're going to be doing those more in the next, the next question. So this was just simply asking are these solutions, and yes, you've confirmed it algebraically. You also could have done it by plugging them in to this and typing it into your calculator.
All right, hopefully nine will be a little bit quicker here. So I'm going to try to solve for this now, and I'm going to get it down to just a single trig function of an angle, and I'm going to be solving for that x. So I'm, again, asking myself, is there any subtraction or addition not in parentheses? This was never in parentheses, so I'm going to go ahead and say that it's not. Uh, we have the square root of 3 cosecant of x is equal to 2. I'm going to divide now because I'm on to multiplication and division and undoing that. All right, so I have cosecant of x is equal to 2 over the square root of 3. Now I'll tell you what, it's a lot easier to work with sine, cosine, and tangent. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and reciprocate both sides. So if I wanted to, I could go ahead and flip this to be 1 over cosecant of x, which is just sine of x, and I can reciprocate this as well. It's going to be the square root of 3 over 2. And don't forget, the reason we can do that is because, I mean, I could go ahead and easily um, multiply both sides by the square root of 3, okay, thereby eliminating those. And then what I could do is divide both sides by cosecant of x, divide cosecant of x, thereby eliminating those, and then I would have gotten 1 over cosecant of x over here, and then I could divide by 2 off both sides, thereby eliminating those. Uh, I don't think I meant to cross that out. I'm sorry. So then we got the square root of 3 over 2 is equal to 1 over cosecant of x. So there we have it. All right, so now sine of x, we're looking for what angle? Um, when you take the sine of it, are you going to get the square root of 3 over 2? So on your unit circle, I hope you can recognize that as the longer leg to that 30, 60, 90 triangle. So we want sine, we want height, that's that longer leg of that 30, 60, 90 triangle. And so whoops, there we would have it. It would be that, that upright triangle that's sitting at what we call pi divided by 3, and then this is 2 pi divided by 3. Okay, so your two answers or these ask for all solutions, so x is just going to be equal to 2 pi thirds, but then we have to also take into account that if I wrapped around this and went around again and went around again, those also would all have signs of the same thing. It would be sine of that square root of 3 over 2. So um, being that cosecant is, or I guess we're looking at sine now. Sine has a period of 2 pi n. I can go ahead and just say 2 pi n, 2, uh, 2 pi times n, okay, because the period is 2 pi. And then also we have the this, this one as a solution, and then also all coterminal angles with that, so plus 2 pi n. Okay. And finally, I'm going to do number 39. Okay, 39 is actually what's graphed, and what they ask you to do is find um, find out the x-intercepts for this. So first of all, keep in mind what x-intercepts are. Are you solving for the values of x for which y is equal to 0? So I am going to turn this in to an equation. All right, now at this point what I want to do is I want to go ahead and get sine by itself, this this single trig by itself. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract negative or subtract one. I get sine is equal to pi over two x is equal to negative one. So keep in mind your your book actually gives you a picture, but I'm going to solve it algebraically. So I'm going to go ahead and let theta equal pi over two x. All right, so what I'm going to do is solve really for when is sine of theta equal to negative 1. I'm going to focus on that. And sine theta, um, that theta, when it's equaling negative 1, there's only one of them. It's this, this point right here on your unit circle. So this is 3 pi halves. All right, so what I'm interested in is the theta equaling 3 pi halves. But recall that I'm actually interested in solving for x here, so I have to sub back in what that theta was, um, that pi halves x is equal to 3 pi halves. Okay, I'm going to move this down a bit. So uh, now in solving for x, what I would have to do, I'm just going to multiply this by its reciprocal times uh, 2 over pi. 
So what happens is that pi will cancel it out. Um, these twos will cancel each other out. What we get is x is equal to three. And on your book, it's, there's a better graph of it, but that's right there as well. Okay. So um, that's one of your solutions. But now keep in mind we need to tag on all the rest for how much, as much as this will repeat itself. And this will repeat itself after one period, which we will have to calculate. The period of this thing is going to be two pi divided by and then that b, so um, pi over two. But instead I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal, so two over pi. Those pi's cancel each other out. What we get is four. Our period is four. So not only will we have a solution or an x-intercept at x equals three, but also at plus four times n for as many times as you want to add on a period. Okay. All right, so that's it.